Hello, it's Terry. Um, first of all, I found my apron. It's so cute. I love it. It's ripped a little. I got it from a flea market. You know, those big tents of, I'll say Oriental, but stuff made in China, basically. But it's wonderful. It's, I get paint all over everything. I get glue on me because I have a bad habit of rubbing it in and then wiping it. I don't know why I do it that way. Okay, so this thing, you see, let me pull my camera up a little. This thing, I got at a garage sale, and the woman had made this. I was really jealous of her because she made this wonderful picture of a snowman, which I have somewhere, but I, she said it, she gave it to her daughter, and her daughter turned around and gave it back to her, and I was like, oh, that's pretty ungrateful. Because it was a really cute picture, but I don't know her relationship with her daughter, so, you know, I don't know. Maybe her daughter got, you know, needed some new scenery or whatever and wanted her mom to have it back. I don't know what the deal was, but I thought it was kind of rude. But anyway, so she made this. I don't know what she used it for. So it looks like it was a cutting board at once. See, the cutting boards usually have the hole. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to box it in. I'm going to sand it down, paint it whatever color I want to paint, and then um, box it in. And then um, maybe put a couple of uh, hooks down here for keys or, you know, whatever. Whatever you want to hang up there. And this can be maybe a glove box. You put your gloves in or something to that effect. So I'm going to start sanding this down. Um, I'm going to use a tougher grit paper. Um, this one, I believe, is 320, maybe? Yeah, this is 320 paper. So, I do have a DA. I have the, you know, the rotational sand or whatever, whatever you call it. Um, but it runs on air. And the air thing makes so much noise. I am not going to do that. I don't like it. I want to get an electric one. But I also don't want the air blowing in here to be you know, dusty. So once I get my utility room set up with my saws and whatnot, I got a nice workbench in there. Um, I'll be going in there to do all the cutting and stuff. So anyway, that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start sanding on this thing. Okay, so I'm actually, now this is already paintable. I'm just taking the, the slight finish it's got. I'm just rubbing that off. That's all I'm doing. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, look at, that's, that's because it's a finish on there. If it was wood, it would be falling off, but this is, uh, stuck. So it's actually some kind of finish that she had put on it. But, um, I wanted to talk about, a little bit about my boys today. Um, Rodney, he was 20. Back in 2011, he turned 20 in June, and he had a horrific car accident in July. So, he hadn't been 20 but a month, you know, a little more than a month. And he passed away, and it was a terrible accident. But, I more so want to talk about now. But, um, Christian, he was 26. And in 2019, in November, he passed away due to an overdose. Christian's death, I mean Rodney's death was a total surprise. Christian's wasn't a surprise because we've seen what was happening. And we tried to intervene. I mean, we tried so hard. We took him and tried to admit him. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't take him. I wish I could, you know, bring a lawsuit against somebody to, to try to help someone else that's suffering through this. Uh, you know, somebody's parent who's trying to get their kid help. But no, he's over, uh, he's over age. So you can't commit someone if they're over age, you know, involuntarily. Unless they're trying to harm themselves. So, I mean, he was half cropped when we took him in there, and they're talking to him, and he's like, no, I, I never said that. But before, he did tell us, 
that he was going to commit suicide, that he wanted to be admitted or committed, whatever you call it, but <clears throat> everything we did just wasn't good enough. Um, we just, I tried so hard, but in the end, it, it didn't work out. Um, it didn't work out. We lost our, we lost our son. And, you know, it, it hurts. It hurts deeply because I looked into his eyes and I saw him, I saw into his heart. And he was so sad. He, you know, he lost his, his best friend, his brother. In 2011, they were so tight. I mean, they were best friends. There was nothing that they didn't tell each other, and you know, there was nothing that they didn't do together, and you know, whatnot. So he lost him. He was almost 18. He turned 18 um, two short weeks later, basically two and a half. And uh, he happened to be in boys' school for all kinds of stuff. Trust me, he had plenty of chances, but he, he wouldn't quit whatever it was he was doing. He was a nut. But anyway, um, he was a, he's a rebellious child. Just like me, except I did not take it extreme. I, I matured much faster than he did. I think girls tend to do that, especially when they get pregnant and get married and have babies. But anyway, we were on that, you know, self-destruct path and or you know as, as, at a very young age I mean I think he started about 15 years old where he got to where he just wouldn't listen to anyone at all so we his dad and I we tried you know this and that and whatnot and when he got out of boys school he didn't want anything to do with me here he didn't want to be in his mom's house he wanted to be out on his own, so he moved in with my sister and, um, and my, my nephew, her son, in Ohio, and uh, he did whatever he did, but he wasn't being a bad kid. I'm sure they drank and you know, maybe smoked pot. He didn't like pot, so I don't think he was... See, all this is all finished, guys. This is 100%. If you can see the shine on it. That's the finish that she had put on here, and that's all I'm trying to do is just take that finish off because our paint won't stick unless you get it 100%. Not 100%, probably. Just 98.9, you know. Uh -huh. But anyway, um, so he went to live with my sister, and that was at the very end of 2011. So 2012 rolls along my sister passed away I believe it was in September and my sister that he was living with just suddenly passed away and she had just actually just moved but you know same concept she had been living with him or they had been living together and um so you know it was another big loss for him he absolutely loved her he, he loved her so much he was so mad because one of the dogs said chewed up a piece of his blank, uh, blanket that she had given him, and it's just a regular blanket, you know what I mean, it's not like a quilt or any kind of a keepsake, but she gave him that blanket and he wanted to keep that, and I'm not sure if it was saved, if it's in his room, I still don't go in there too much because there's so much pen in there, but anyway, so he lost her, and then, um, oh, was a, f a few years went by he had his uh, we had him all set up there in Ohio with his own place and he, you know Mike and I bought him a trailer and he just one day just jumped up and left literally left he took the clothes on his back and the toothbrush I think and headed down to Indianapolis where that's where his dad was, and that's where he had gotten in all that trouble, but anyway, he was with a woman, a girl, let's just call her a girl, they were probably 19, 19 years old, um, they got into the heroin, and, uh, the rest, you can say is history, but, so, they end up coming here to get clean, 
and you know I gave him every chance to, to do that I, there's not going to be prejudiced against him or her um, but she immediately left him like I got her a job here and she started screwing around with one of the guys that she worked with that we worked with but um, and she you know she left him here she said and trust me this was hard for me she said we're no good together and I love you with all my heart but if we stay together we're gonna die so she got out and she's still clean and bless her heart I love her but it's so hard you know it's so hard she's got a little boy now and I so wanted that boy to be mine to be my grandchild but it wasn't meant to be so anyway later his best friend in Indianapolis passed away you know when he was here and he said mom I'm the one that got him on heroin he said my exact words were it's the best feeling ever you've got to try this and that's what he died from and I could start to see it there in his face and I think I started to know then that you know what I was dealing with what you know what was going to happen with this boy and I tried so hard I mean his friend um, invited him to live with him and Christian was happy with that you know every time I got him a job he he OD'd every single time so this last time I got him a job and guess what but so this friend dies you know he's got that to bear feeling like it's his fault he didn't go to the funeral that was another thing that bothered him and I think it was the guilt that was the reason why he didn't go um, he thought that the kid's dad was going to be too pissed at him and he was he was just scared he just felt guilty and he just didn't know what to do so he didn't go and he felt bad about that and then I believe it was one year later his best friend that he made here since moving here died in a horrific car accident they just like his brother I mean they had been really close um, you know some things I didn't even want to know about involving the Devin's girlfriend but yeah I don't still don't know and I don't really care to but all the details there but it seems to me like she was a girlfriend of both of them so this is starting to feel better I can still feel the finish though um, so I'm just gonna keep you know just kind of moving around a little bit I make sure you know you don't do it with one finger you end up with a groove that's why you, when you see me you'll see all fingers together you can use a block I actually do have a block but I don't want to gum the block up you see this is gumming this up really bad so she got a lot of finish on here uh, but anyway so he was with him the night before this accident happened they were down there wherever they partied at in a garage down the street up the street wherever and uh, somebody broke out the uh, what do you call it the tweaker pipe and he told me that he don't do that shit he don't like that shit he likes the mellow Anyway, I gotta go upstairs and eat. I haven't ate all day, but anyways, he told me he didn't like the tweaker pipe. He didn't like the way that stuff made him feel, because he was a mellow person. So, he liked the mellow stuff. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, so anyway. He said that, I mean, he liked the mellow stuff, and he didn't like that, so he had told me uh, the next morning when I got him up for work that he left there I told him I, he came home early I was really surprised 
always worried about him not getting up for work. And, you know, just looking out. I didn't want him to lose his job and whatnot. And so he told me he was home. I said, what time did you get home? He said, 10.30. And I said, I thought it was around 10. And he told me what happened. And, um, sadly, evidently, his friend had stayed up all night. Like you do when you're doing that kind of a buzz. And on his way home from work, he evidently fell asleep. Drove right into a an SUV. So it was a car versus an SUV at normal, you know, highway speeds. And he didn't make it. Um, so this really did him in. This was the last straw. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I could see it. Like, there's nothing worse for a mother to see their child dying in front of their eyes. And somebody had Xanax. And they all started doing these Xannies, or peaches they called them. And he was high all the time. So he was going to work that way. He was, uh, anyways, I got to sand it pretty good. It's going to accept paint. Um, I th I'm just not sure what, what color I'm going to paint it yet, but I'll sand on it a little bit more I tell my story. But anyway, he, uh, you know, missed a couple days of work and he just got worse and worse. He was just so high, like he's on the, uh, forklift at work and he's so high he's falling asleep. So it just was too noticeable. Everybody noticed it. Um, he thought I told them he was high. I don't know why he thought I was one of his enemies or something. He couldn't tell me the truth. And I always tried to tell my boys, you know, you can tell me anything. But I told him, I said, you're breaking my heart because I would have never told anybody that. You know, that I would have never tried to hurt your reputation. I said, everybody can see it. And he's like, I'm not high. And he's telling me he's so high he can't even stand up straight. This has still got a lot of... You can just feel it. The thick gummy peel. But anyway, um, he had to get it through his head that I'm not his enemy. I tried and tried and tried. It's not me. It's not me. But So we watched him. We watched him uh, go from fun-loving, you know, decent, happy, kind of, to uh, totally heartbroken. When I would um, look into his face see into his eyes he didn't like making eye contact with me because he was high and he didn't want me to see it but I just I just saw the sadness it was it was just terrible and we were going through so much trying to get him to realize that you know first of all we all know that you're high secondly you need to sober up you know but you can't get someone to sober up that doesn't want to and he had no he did not want to sober up at all. So it, we were just fighting a losing battle. And he evidently, well, he got fired. I mean, he got walked out. And, you know, the guy didn't want to. Christian was a hell of a worker. He just wouldn't stop, you know, going in there high. And uh, he took his last two paychecks that he had, the one he had cashed up, and um, he gave me $600 so that I could put, because he promised me he would help so that we could put um, uh, propane in our tank for the heater, because it was November, and we needed, you know, we needed to make sure we had enough for the winter. So he gave me that, and he still had about 600 bucks. And I tried to get it from him. I tried so hard. And he's like, I already spent it, Mom. 
at that point I didn't believe him. But he says, don't worry about it. I already I already spent it, I bought some drugs, and I'm gonna sell them. And at this point I had sent messages to my nephew Matt and my son's friend that ha he had been living with for all that time, and they both, you know, basically declined to come and get him. And I said, you know, he's off the he's off the rails. He's not gonna make it. And they they had their reasons, and I absolutely understand. Absolutely, don't blame them at all. I want to blame them, but I can't. I want to blame his ex girlfriend, but I can't. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I want to. I want to put the blame somewhere. No, you killed my son. It was you that did it, but the reality is it was him. He chose it. And I seen it, but I didn't know that he already had the heroin. He had gotten a hold of somebody that he dealt with in Indianapolis. And he traded this huge TV he had and six hundred dollars. I don't know how much heroin he got, you know, I don't know anything about it, but the first night, when he got up the next morning, I didn't know he had heroin. I thought he had the peaches still, but he got up the next morning and he was so clear. He was there. He was my son, and he said, I said, honey, you look so good right now. You know, I can tell you're not high, you're looking great. And he's like, Mom, I got the best sleep I've gotten since Devin died. And I was, you know, I was happy. And 24 hours later, he was dead. Because he already had the hair when I didn't know it. When I got home, he was high again. When I got home from work, and I still thought it was peaches. So I was trying to tell him to lay off of them. Just get off of them. You don't need that. It takes time, you know? Give yourself some time. But he wouldn't admit it. He just would not admit it. So I said, did you buy heroin? No. Let me see your arms. He took his coat off and he showed me. And there was nothing, and I knew it wasn't just your arms that you can use, but I figured if he was doing it, you know, he wouldn't leave the marks on his arms anyway, but I thought, you know, it's just, it's me showing him that I care about him, but this friend across the road, he knew what was going on, he didn't tell me that he bought heroin, would I have? At 26 years old, would I have, or however old this kid is, would I have told his mom if, or you know, if my friend had done it, would I have told their mom? Well, I had a friend who shot up things, morphine, cocaine, and whatnot. And I didn't call her mom up and say, hey, she's got this, she's got that. You know, you don't do that. It's unrealistic to think that you would. Oh, this thing's got so much finish on it. So much. Use paint thinner. I think paint thinner is just worthless. But anyway, I'm going to paint this one and seal it up. I think I'm going to spray paint it white instead of trying to brush it down. I, I wanted it to look old, but this is hard. Maybe I'll put some glue on it and do my famous uh, crackle. But anyway, yeah, 24 hours later he was dead. And he, I guess he vegged out on this kid's couch. I was trying to get a hold of him. And he, he said that he had to wake him up. Of course he came after he was dead. After the police left, after everything was over, to tell me what had happened, and said some dude from Indianapolis came, and Christian traded that TV because I sent the kid a message and said, "Hey, I want that TV back. Bring that TV back." He said he took it over there.
so that they could play games on, you know, the two different screens. And I didn't have any reason to was over there every night playing games. I didn't have any reason not to believe him. But anyway, I tried. And, you know, I, I feel like I can still feel my kids here sometimes. Not all the time, but I feel like I can. And earlier I lit a couple of fake candles. This one feels pretty good, but this one still feels yucky. I lit a couple of fake candles, like those emergency candles, they call them, from Dollar Tree. I have a little wall where I have their, like their graduation pictures up of the two boys. And I was talking to them, and I said, come home, boys. Come to Mama, because, you know, and like the Dia de Muertes, you know, the Day of the Dead, they believe if you light the candles, or I guess they just believe it, period, when your loved ones, if you leave a candle in the window, they can find their way home, so I lit up those candles, and I told them, you know, come home, boys, come on home, and I'll be damned if the song, what I got from Sublime, didn't come on, and that is absolutely Pumbaa. He asked me one day, um, he was about 15, he said, Mom, tell me a song to learn on the guitar. And I said, just right away, what I got? And he's like, oh, Sublime, yeah. So, you know, my musical tastes went straight to my kids, and I absolutely loved that. I loved that I am from them, and, you know, but I think he idolized, you know, not Soundgarden, Stone Temple Pilots, Scott Weiland, uh, he died from drugs, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, he was on heroin when he killed himself, um, and then Sublime, um, Brad, can't think of his name, I know it, trust me, I know, I know every freaking word of everything about that guy you kind of read up on that after your kid does what he does, but he idolized uh, Motley Crue, the Heroin Diaries, but anyway, so I never influenced him on Motley Crue, trust me, that wasn't my thing, but anyway, so that song comes on, and then the song Wood from Alice in Chains, and we listen to the words, um, because I yell at him all the time about leaving me here alone. I feel like he shouldn't have left me. Yeah? Like, you know, the older boys, who mean every bit as much to me as the, as the younger ones, but they were like a separate class. They lived with their dad. And Rodney and Christian both lived with me. And we were like a trio, you know. And, you know, I got into some trouble, and we all got separated, and, but we all got back together. And then I felt when Rodney died, I really felt like Rodney really loved me, and Rodney wanted to be with me, but I never felt that with Christian. I, I, I felt the resentment. And no matter how many times you apologize to someone, you can't make them accept it. You can't make them accept an apology ever. So, yeah, still sanding on this one. I said I was done. If it wasn't so damn sticky, look at that. It's just still sticking like that. So many pieces of paper. I mean, I think this is probably the harshest. I might have a 180, but I don't want to dig into the wood either. So, it just takes a lot of elbow grease, I guess. But, but anyway, yeah. So, this story talking to the boys, and then, you know, I hear these songs that these boys grew up with, and I, I mean, Rodney, Rodney liked the same music that we all liked, so, Mudvayne, Mudvayne was Rodney's, so every time Mudvayne pops on, I always think, hey, there's Rodney, but I did ask specifically, and I did hear those songs, and I'm not kidding you, Stone Temple Pilots came on then. Nirvana and 
all that 90s stuff that Christian really liked. <sighs> but anyway, I'm going to paint this up. I just wanted to talk. Sometimes I need to talk about this stuff. But I lost Christian long before I lost Christian. I tried. We fought really hard. And he could say, you know, well, it's finally over. And he's not suffering anymore. You're not fighting him anymore. But that's not how it is. I would fight him. I would go through that misery of trying to save him forever, for a million years. If I could have him back. And you know, with Rodney, God, when that happened, I felt so betrayed by God. Like, why? Why did you take my precious kid away from me? I've been through so much. And I come back from it. I came back. I quit drinking. I quit doing drugs. And I quit drinking. I built my life back. I had to live with my mom when I first got out of prison. I stayed away from everything. I didn't do drugs. I didn't hang around with any of the people I'd hung with before. And then my son dies. Get things all set up. Great job. You know, great family. Married Mike. And he take my baby away from me. And then as I started to... You don't get over it, but... As I started to get to where I could talk about it more... Then you take another one. And if the first one hadn't gone, the second one probably would never have gone either. And trust me, I have nothing but time to think about this. Every single day, the last thing I think about, the first thing I think about. It's never ending. <laughs> and it's never one day at a time. Like it is with your stupid alcohol and your stupid drugs. It's one minute at a time. One lousy freaking second. But you don't think you can take another one. And then it slowly just drags by. And there you are. You made it through another fucking second. Anyway, sorry about the cursing. Acetone. Acetone. Look at that. I didn't want to, uh, I got a big bottle of it up there, but if you need some acetone at any time, other than for your fingernails, dance no polish remover 100% acetone so give her a pour a little bit here rub it around and scrape it off it wasn't as messy as I thought it was going to be I thought it was really going to be bad but it's not Not bad. so scrape it and she used spray paint obviously it's spray paint so it wouldn't be that bad if it was a uh, acrylic, whatever. I don't know what spray paint's made out of, to be honest with you, but um, I know that the um, the acrylic paint that we use for crafting doesn't have uh, or is, is water soluble. This stuff is not. And it's coming up my paper so bad that I just want to just want to get it off there. Right now. So, as Tom it is. And then... Now you don't want to use sandpaper when all the acetone is on there because it's just going to gum your paper if you're just going to waste your paper. So, how do I know this? Because I worked in a mold shop. Worked in a mold shop for, for years. And I actually was pretty good at it. Um, I got pretty good at repairing molds as well as finishing brand new molds. I even worked in the pattern shop part of it for a while. Um, making good money, but it's a tedious job. Oh my goodness. You stand there all day, sometimes in one spot, and sometimes I'll say all day, like all day or two weeks working on the same damn thing. They take so long. And you gotta do it right. I mean, everything you do to that mold um, is gonna show when you get the part out of that mold. So the molds have to be just absolutely perfect. Just this way for a minute. 
This is really good. Look at this. It's crazy. Crazy amount. Yeah, she really did. She used the heck out of that spray. Spray paint. I'm not going to be able to get it off of all of it like that. I mean, I'm lucky I got what I did. You know, you can use the the paper, you know, the paper towel too. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You can dry it, but we got uh, the wood sticking up here, so this isn't going to work as well as it did on the back side. So let's get the thicker stuff off, I guess. I, yeah, I don't think I'm going to mess too much with the inside part. If you ask Tom. I get these sides though, because I'm going to cover this, so we're not even going to see it. So let me do this. I love that you can see the wood here. The, you know, the grain of the wood. So I'm going to change that. Oh, look at that coat right off. All that sand and I did for nothing. But I didn't know. I did not know. in there. Oh, I don't do that. See, I scratched it. So now I have to sand that down. Alright. So we got it now. I'll be back when I decide what to paint. Obviously, the woman who did this um, originally wanted it to look old. She did a great job with spray paint. So, anyway, the acetone, clean off my. This is a cutting board. The ones you get two for a dollar or whatever. I actually got them two for 50 cents. They have off sale in a tool shop or a thrift shop, I guess she is. I don't know. She got a bunch of tools like. Like uh, bits for your screwdriver, drill bits, things like that. See this? This is where the acetone uh, went and sat on it while I would be scraping something else. It probably ran down the side and ended up here. And it's great. I just can't get a lot of it off down in here because of the grooves. I don't want to uh, damage it. So I'll just get off what's flaky. Flaky and crusty. So. Yeah, I think this is good. It feels so much better. There's one spot here, right here. Put that on. I don't want to pour the last on it, but I can just scrape it. Down here. Yeah. So anyway. Oh, I don't have this one taped down. I'm just going to tape down. They're running all the way along the table. It's a cutting board. All the way down. I don't know how I get so much crap up under it. I just put that there. Okay, so next time you see this, it's going to be painted. Probably. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know. Do I want to do a crackle on it? I don't think so. I've been doing everything with a crackle. I don't know. 